parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hi, everybody. It's Fake Sorg here live from not Pittsburgh, New York. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode number 570. Oh, we are. We, Sorg. Just need a fucking number. Sorg has. has Sorg is on location in the remote wilderness of middle america i'm pretty sure he is being hunted by the federales we're not sure what he did we're not sure where he is but he will be back next week in the meantime you have fake sorg doing all the business stuff and uh you can well is, if this is your first time here sorry this, this is this is the wrestling mayhem show where we talk about wrestling sometimes especially um on day and weeks where things don't happen too much but um if, if you want to be a part of the show you can email us at Good times. Yo, good times. Wow, wow there's a there's nobody here. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized how weird that sounds. Yeah, it, it's it's okay. Um good times at wrestling mayhem show dot com. And uh Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> who who are you, sir? I'm Mad Mike. Okay. Um yeah, no, yeah. I I freaked out for a second because I have the chat up and my voice started echoing in my own ear. Ooh. I I am I'm Mad Mike from Poughkeepsie, New York. Whoa! I thought you were sore for a minute. I know, right? It's it's a very very seamless transition that I do. Um, also, you can you can you know continue. Whoa, where's, the, where did Mad Mike go? It, it's it's back to fake sore. Back to fake sore. You can also you. call us when you're drunk, please at four one two. 206 WMS0 or 9670 for those of you who do not have letters on your phone. And, and also, uh, for the audio listeners, Mad Mike is wearing glasses. Yes. So I, I, should, I should point that out. I when, when I am doing business like things, I am wearing the glasses. I'm being fake Sorg from faux Pittsburgh. Uh, you can also co- tweet us at Mayhem Show. Go to our Facebook group. We have a bunch of stuff there. Look us up on video or audio on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud. I'm not even sure all those apply anymore, but look anyway. And if they're not, search ask, for ask for us back. Just also, search. And if you do uh, listen to us on you on iTunes, please comment. I we love comments. I will if you comment this week, I will read your comments next week in a funny voice. I can't guarantee what that voice will be. But it will be humorous, at least to myself. It's probably gonna be Vince McMahon or the Macho Man, as I really only That's, have three impressions. Yeah. Yeah. I have I have three impressions. The other one is Dusty Rhodes. Sword. So, oh, oh, I thought you meant. Well, sword. no, oh, no, no. I thought, sword, I thought you were sword. Sword. just a persona I am okay. adopting right. right now. Um. Also, you can support us on Patreon, Riz. Did you know that? I did not know that. Well, you can. You can go to patreon.com slash WMS. What? Yeah, and there's several different levels. You get gold, which unfortunately there won't be too much gold this week. No. Because um we can't record gold without Sorg because um he Sword is the is he gold. is the gold member of the show. He he loves gold. He, sorry, Austin Powers dated reference. Anyway, mm. we would like to say thank you. To our awesome patrons, remember, if you patronize us through Patreon, we will announce your name any way you wish on the show. I take advantage of it every year. You better, you better say this name right. I please. I'm of course the the first subscriber we've had for a long time subscriber. Bo diggity. Woo! Woo! Also, we have Ed Burke 37, the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. Uh, Trey Gar, Trey, uh, Trey is a huge supporter of us. Bobby F. J. Town, whoever the heck he is, no idea. 
also at the Pocky Club level, we have Tina Keys and Christopher Bishop. So thank you guys. Um, I, call, I call him the Fallen Angel, Christopher Bishop. <laughs> that's weird. I call him Cobra Commander, Christopher Bishop. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you can support us too at um, Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Sorry, I had the wrong link. I had the wrong uh, address there. Oh. But, um, okay. Yeah. So uh, Riz. Yes. Riz, hold on. Let me let me get Mad Mike back in here for a second. Well, there you are. I was. Hi, hi Riz. Hi, Riz. I was um, worried the audio listeners didn't know who the hell was talking. Yeah, uh, it, it's okay. I, I'm I'm a, I'm oh. back to Mad Mike. Hold on, civilis, civilis, civilis. Fuck TNA. Fuck TNA. Fuck TNA. And I'm back. All right, Riz. What the hell happened in wrestling this week? Like nothing. Yeah, it, it's a light week. Like, it, it, I think it's because of the tour going on right now. Yeah, the the tour. Like, all right. Uh, by the way, Tina, thank you for saying I have an award winning role as Sorg. Uh, in our in our chat room going on, um, I, I humbly accept all and any awards and or I mean, nominations. I mean, I'm, I'm here too. Well, but you're not you're not playing anyone's role. Are you trying to pretend to be like Bobby or Wheels or or I'm, Eamon? I'm pretending to be me. Riz, you don't have to pretend to be you. We love you being you. So anyway, th- this year European... really dark in a little bit in a while, didn't it? Wow, this European tour. Kind of sucks for us, doesn't it? Yeah, but it, on multiple levels. I mean, I, you, get, you get you get the pre-tape shows, mm-hmm. which the, which are never really that good. No, and then you get the. Uh, I believe Titus was the first one to bring this to our attention on Thursday. Um, it looks like Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns have uh, got back together. Yeah, uh, they they just can't quit each other. It seems uh, they're 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 in pictures going I, to the Roman. I, I guess we, I guess I guess you can say Braun isn't really done with Roman yet. No, no, not they're... not in here, not in his heart. <laughs> uh, there, there are so many. Like I saw so many pictures with Braun and Roman this weekend that it just makes me care so much less about their feud. I I want to I want. I want them to bring this up and somehow bring it up in in con- like bring it up in the angle. That would be incredibly interesting <laughs> to see uh, how they spin this and go. Well, I was stalking you from behind. You just didn't see me, uh, and they needed they needed five of us to separate each other. So there, unless they actually tore down the rest of the Coliseum. Which would actually be amazing. Like I, I, I don't need to see them in the same pictures. Like let's at least pretend for a little bit, for a scotch. Like even if it's just like they find themselves in the same picture and one of them's just looking over at the other, like you motherfucker. Like, yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> just just have them stare down each other the entire time they're there. Like That'd don't take it on off. Or like have them actually step in the middle of the coliseum. They can pretend to be gladiators. That'd be great. But I think because of what what we learned uh, about Braun Strowman being out, they're probably going to make sure that we forget this ever happened. Oh yeah, they, absolutely. They're, they're, they're they're waiting their sweet sweet time to bring him back now. Um, by the way, get get well soon, Bra- Bra- Braun. Yes, get well soon, Braun. Um... I, I hope you're back in enough time to job to Roman Reigns at Extreme Rules. Oh. You know it's gonna happen. Yeah, in, Am- that amb- in that ambulance match. Ambulance match. Oh, that's gonna be the worst. <laughs> but uh, you know what isn't the worst, Riz? You know what isn't the worst, and it happened tonight. The by God fashion bobbies. Yes. The fashion police went to England. <laughs> Um, we had Sherlock there, Dango. Of course he did. Sherlock Dango was... That maybe was my favorite part of SmackDown this week. I mean, Smack, like, the SmackDown brand split has... The brand split alone has two winners for SmackDown so far. One is uh, Jinder, and the other is the uh, Breeze Dango. Yes. 
they both have flourished so much with this brain split. And is it and they haven't been even been in many matches. They've just grown into like a like they've grown their character so much that he makes them believable and you want them to do something with. And that's what the SmackDown is right now. I mean, uh, AJ Styles said it on Talking Smack, and they talked about it a little bit on bringing it to the table last night. SmackDown makes stars and Raw takes them. Exactly. Like, that's that's happened, entirely true. That's what happened in the last brand split, too. Uh, I don't know about that, necessarily. I John think, Cena I think, got think, traded, got, John Cena got drafted twice. Yeah, but I think Raw the made their fair share of stars too. I think Raw, Raw made some stars too because, um, <clears throat> I believe during the last brand split, uh, Edge. Oh no, Edge was made on SmackDown. Then Edge went was over SmackDown. Raw. Edge yeah, was then, SmackDown. Uh, Punk was Smack. Like, Punk was ECW. Punk was ECW. Yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. Punk was ECW. Then SmackDown. Then Raw. Yes. Wow. Well, I well, think by, I think by the time yeah by yeah by the time ECW was gone, there was no more brand split. Like there was no more brand extension. Mm-hmm. But still, so, I mean, those two those two team like the teams and and even the Bollywood boys. I mean, they were nothing. <laughs> like they were just a regular tag team in two hundred five live where there's no tag teams ever. And they they finally found a place with Jinder Mahal. Although we've yet to see them wrestle. Exactly. I would like to see them have an actual match as opposed to just being Jinder's backup. But you know they're just going to get RKO'd. Uh, probably. Times. But, all right. Hold this on. week. So Riz. Yes. Jinder Mahal. Mm-hmm. Do you think he actually stands a chance to win the belt? This is the thing. They already made me believe it. Like I, I don't, I don't think he is. But that little sliver of what if they do? What if they put it on gender, and then make him face like the top stars? Like, what if they put it on gender, and make him go head to head with someone who we already has beef with? The great colleague, handsome Rusev. Ooh, ooh. Uh huh. Oh, money in the bank is not too far away. It's not too far away. It's in July. <laughs> it's in oh, July. Wow, it is I, in July. I can see a triple threat <laughs> with handsome Rusev, Maharaji Jinder, and Viper Orton. I can see that. I can see that really well. And then oh, that could be really and, fun. And then, and then my my brain just went to. Just a kicking contest between Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev. Ah, <laughs> yes. Oh, just those two awesome. kicking each other in the head really hard, as hard as they can. I don't know if they. I don't know if they would do that as hard as they can, because Shinsuke Nakamura has broken a few jaws and things. This is true. He's dislocated a few things. But like, then he can be handsome again. That, that's. I'd argue he the, never the face, wasn't not the handsome. Face mask and everything. <laughs> Oh. Uh, sure. But um, so I I think Jinder is gonna win at Backlash, or yeah, Backlash. I I think he's actually gonna win, and uh, I, d- I don't gonna get, I, I, gonna get the Bollywood Bashams in his oh, uh in his in his Indian cabinet. It, oh, why'd you bring up the Bashams again? I'm I'm just saying he's like all he needs is one. Mid card lackey to make that a real thing. I mean, you could you could have mentioned you know J and J security. You could have mentioned anything else, but no, you had. I, I could have mentioned a lot of different names. Oh, you did. You should. Yeah. I could have mentioned the Gemini. How about, how about the dicks? <laughs> how about the teachers' pets with Michelle McCool? Oh, uh, what about me? No, no, we can't ever mention me. <laughs> too late, too we late. Can't. It's been mentioned. Damn it! Oh, apparently, uh, I I didn't know if I heard this or not. Brandon said that Rusev is going to be on SmackDown next week. Oh, so that that should be fun. I hope he's cleared from his injury. I hope it's just like a, a YouTube video of him just telling people he's going to be at 
like a different pay per view each time. <laughs> like, like not even not even a WWE pay per view. Just like he's gonna he wants a title match at Bash of the Beach. All right, now now I have a question. Yes. Do we go full Russian informant with Rusev? I mean they they already <laughs> they already tried that. I mean they already made light of it with uh, uh, with Lana and the Russian hacking of yeah. the of the ice cream flavors, which by the way have stopped for some reason. Uh yeah, I think that's because Kofi got injured. Also because they never actually had ice cream. But yeah, they 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 made light of it, but I can see them doing like a like a um, like a snitch type thing situation. I think that I think it could be really interesting. Like like he has something on Daniel Bryan or something like that, and that's how he gets his title shot. Yeah, and my and my idea might be my my prediction might be that close when you say that too. Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, apparently, according to Tina, at a house show in Seattle. At the end of June, do you want to hear what the main event is, Riz? Sure. Um, a Mister Face of America, Kevin Owens, against face of America. Uh, against a Mister King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, Riz is going to Seattle. I'm, I'm, I'm going moving, to Seattle. I'm going to Seattle, everybody. See ya. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to the West Coast right now. <laughs> Holy crap! Uh, I you know that's one match I didn't even think of, but now I need it. I want to watch it. I want to. I want. I want it to be live. I want it to be taped. I want it to be shown over and over again on WWE Network now. Mm-hmm. Or did I just say WWE Network? Like, like yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I yeah, know what you mean, Kurt. I, I want to watch <laughs> <Okay>. it now. <laughs> like, I, I, like just that thought of Kevin Owens and Shinsuke going at it and just beating the shit out of each other. I just think awesome. the, prom- the promos for that would be amazing. <laughs> like, because I can see Nakamura like stomping on the giant face of Kevin Owens. <laughs> <laughs> like him attacking Owens from behind, just stomping on the giant head. That'd be the best. Oh. I, hope it, I hope someone does that in the near future. Oh, I hope so. Oh, you know it's going to happen. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I can see. Well, if I can see, like, so, if it was still like in the PG thirteen ish era, and I hate saying that, by the way, I hate to say that. But if it was like in the in the back in the day, I can definitely see somebody like just popping a squat over the face. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Him. Oh yeah, th- that would definitely occur. Like just mm-hmm. someone pretend to take a douche, uh, a douche on Kevin Owens' face. Yeah, yeah, that would be hilarious. Oh, I mean, you know, kinda. By the way, ever like, and this is probably going to be a weird segue here, but ever notice we don't have really a schedule for what we have to say and when we have to say it. Isn't that the best type of podcast? I, I mean, I never, I never schedule anything. No. And that's what podcasts should be. It shouldn't be a list of things to say to other people that are in there. Like, you know, man, Mike, yes, you, worked, you worked for the WWE. I did how, work for the WWE. Riz. How was that situation? And did you meet JBL? Um, no, I, I didn't do that. I, I didn't. And then, and then Sorg, and then Sorg if, you, if you're listening. Hold on, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, you can ask I, him. You can Sorg. ask Sorg. In, in yes, post, yes, Riz. Yes, in Riz. post, can you have a list of each <laughs> question that I ask, man, Mike, in this situation? Riz, are you suge- – don't get hot, Riz. Don't get hot. Don't get hot. All right. So, That's so, stupid. That, so that, that, so, that yeah. show is not good. No, it's bring, not. Bring it to the table. If you haven't watched it, it's on the network. It's kind of their version of Sports Center. Or like, pardon the interruption, or something like that. But it's their podcast, uh, no, it, it, it's more it's like not... PTI, like like PTI or around the horn. Like they literally stole the exact format. No, yeah, yeah, it, it is PTI. It's not that good either. Because I mean, there are some things on there that are really fun, like Corey Graves. Basically, anything Corey Graves says Corey is Graves, great. Yeah. Corey Graves is fun. But they also have JBL and some guy. You, 
who is a fan and, and has a radio show who wants to talk about wrestling and it's kind of boring when he talks about it. Yeah, especially because he... Um, douche. Yeah, he, he's, he's not good. He's not <laughs> no, good. he's not good. Like, if they got the, uh, the other guy that's on, uh, that, that was on... Uh, uh, Sam Roberts. The one yes, that, that guy. The, the one that keeps saying during every show they want back on it. Yes. Like if they had that guy, I would probably watch it because he is a he's a guy who legitimately likes professional wrestling. And I'm not saying this other the Rosenberg Rosen Rosenberg right? I think Rosenberg. Yeah. yeah, I'm not saying he doesn't like wrestling. I'm just saying he just comes along. It might be just WWE programming and WB forcing him to say stuff like that, but he just doesn't seem genuine when he does it. He really and doesn't. He, he no. comes he comes off as parroting a company line, like nine times out of ten. Because, I'm sorry, if you have JBL on a wrestling show and you're going to talk about things in professional wrestling, the first thing you bring up is, hey, JBL, why are you such a dick? Yeah. That's the first thing. Yes. He even had an intro that led into that. Like, it was it was Rosenberg saying, hi, I'm whatever, and I have a problem with – I don't even remember who his problem was with. And it was like, Corey Graves, and I have made Shane McMahon, ang Shane McMahon angry. And then it went to JBL, who – You know, did that thing with Morrow. Did that thing – and then he's like, I'm JBL, and I won $21 at a poker game. First of all... Fuck you. Yeah. Secondly, who bets only $21 at a poker game, you fucking wimp? Um, by the way, uh, T Tina in the chat room says, not only is Corey the savior of misbehavior, he is the savior of color commentary. This is true. This is absolutely true. Corey Graves is probably the only voice worth listening to. I mean, just right just... Now. Just remember, David Otunga has to come back. I'm, I can't wait for David Otunga to come back. Seriously, I can't wait because I, I'm done with Booker T. Oh, I'm wait. Done. I I think Just we should wait have until you get him. You get David Otunga. No, but David Otunga is at least like white noise. David Otunga okay. is white noise. I can ignore. King so Booker T is just like, oh man, I haven't watched the product since I was wrestling. Did you almost call him King Booker? I almost did. I almost. I, I think we should have a rule that unless your name is Jim Ross, you are not allowed to be on commentary if you are a Hall of Famer. Good. You are not, good call. not allowed. Call. Oh, speaking of Jim Ross, Riz, did you hear about this? I'm guessing not, since you're looking at me blankly. Um, they announced the co the commentary team for the UK shows. Ooh, I think I I know I, I know I heard about Jr. being on. Who's his Who's his partner? Nigel. Yes. Sign me the yes. fuck up. Yes. The only weird thing is now he has to go up against uh, the world of sports. Or in England, who I believe <laughs> almost had Jr. on their like on their team, like right before WWE picked them up, uh -huh. and then now WWE is saying, "Oh, you know what?" Well, I I think idea. I think Jr.'s circumstances changed. That's true. I, I I think I think WWE just offered him more to do because it would not shock me in the least if Jr. is also the lead. On the women's tournament, this is also true. It's upcoming. Who I heard they're actually looking to get uh, Jade and Marty Bell, formerly of Impact, Ooh. in that tournament. Which, yes, please, give me yes. give me some real life Mia Yim as opposed to Jade. I'll take yes. that. I'll take and that also, every day of the week. And also Marty Bell, you know. Yes, of course, Marty Bell. I just of can't remember. I can't remember Marty's indie name. That's why I didn't say it. Was it Marty or, Bell? Was it Marty Bell? I don't think so. In fact, usually, in fact, usually changes the names. Yeah, that's like. true. Uh, now I'm confused. Now I'm gonna look it up. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, um, look it up. Um, but, uh, Tina in the chat rooms. Riz, did you catch up on Two Hundred Five Live last week? Yes. 
Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, and we mentioned it on Midweek War, uh, Sorg missed it because he, he wasn't, he didn't listen to it. Like he, he was listening to it. He just didn't hear it. Yeah. But um, Corey threw some fucking shade at Tom Phillips no. last week. Oh, oh my God. Like, oh, it was so much shade. It was like WWE had signed cloak and dagger and it just enveloped the arena. Like, oh, it was so f- for more details on that. Like I get into it a whole bunch on the midweek for 205 live, but oh my God, it was so good. Corey Graves is the savior com- color commentator. Like that should just be his new nickname, the Savior Color Commentator. That's pretty much it. I mean, he is, he is what Jerry Lawler should have been in the nineties. No, he is what Lawler was in the nineties, as long as there was not a single woman present in the ring. Because if you listen, I, I, if you listen to Lawler's commentary, like whenever Bret Hart was out, Lawler was on fucking. Fire, mm-hmm. and when Goldust was out, it was a little weird. But Lawler was a heel, so he was kind of allowed to say the things that he said. Right? Like, not really, but kind of. Like the '90s were a different time. We we're all way, way more, to- way less tolerant of things like that. By the uh, way, uh, Marty Bell's name was Marty Bell. Okay. Wow. Or Izzy Bell. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, but yeah, anyway, back to uh, the. Tom Phillips. <laughs> Fuck Tom Phillips. Wow. That, that, was, yeah, that, that was... 205 Live seems to be the part in WWE where they just say, you know what? Fuck it. You know, what, it, you it, know why I think it is? Because I wouldn't be surprised if sh- when Shane is doing Talking Smack, they're doing it concurrently. And they're watching it. <laughs> well, no, no, like... Like he knows he has one less person in his ear when he's doing commentary. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but like, like you can sh- you can see that in two hundred five live, they they just do some of the r- most random ribbing on a lot of rest, like on a lot of the commentators, like Todd Phillips and uh, Bradshaw. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Trip Bradshaw, tri- famed two hundred five live star, Trip Bradshaw. Like just those this those names alone made it like oh makes them feel like oh they're just a character now like oh, it's just um, a, a thing about itself. Getting back to what we were talking about before, Tina says that World of Sports might not be airing. That there have been some issues there. Of course, because TNA. That would make sense. Because it's TNA. Uh yeah. All right. Well, that may have also played into Jr's decision as to what he was going to do. That's true. That is also true. I, I just want to yell because of TNA. Just randomly. <laughs> Riz, when was the last time you watched TNA? Two years ago. And it, was, <laughs> and it was. And it was. Wait, was it two years ago when um, when Pop TV had that little malfunction and played yeah. the same commercial <laughs> over and over again with, with that with Sesame the, show? Yeah, yeah. No, that was no, the no, last that time. That wasn't two years ago, but oh. Riz, that night for me was just horrifying. I couldn't stop. I, couldn't I stop watched watching. that whole thing. I watched that whole thing. Because you had a didn't you tape it? Didn't you like a DVR it? Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, I DVR goodness. the whole episode. That was that was just. It, it was. It weird. just kept on going. Like, I have the was, largest hands in the world. Bitching. <laughs> Oh God! And uh, wow, God, fuck TNA. Uh, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, but you know what? You know what's a lot better than TNA, Riz? Do you, Do you know what's a lot better than TNA? Does it have cheese? It. You know it can have cheese, Riz. Does that it have tomato sauce? It It can have tomato sauce. Yes, that's true. Are we talking about pizza? We're talking about pizza, yes. Riz. We're talking about Slice on Broadway. Oh, Slice on Broadway. For those of you in the know, you know it feeds the crew that's normally in the the Mayhem Studios, which um, which fake Nobody. Sorg has given me 
sliced on Broadway before, and it is delicious. It is the perfect pepperoni pizza for podcasting in Pittsburgh. Ah, oh, it's so great. You can go to sliceonbroadway.com at pgh underscore slice, I believe. That is correct. Yes, excellent. I did it without. I did it with the glasses on because I can't actually <laughs> read things with these glasses on. That's um, kind of counterproductive, there, isn't it? Well, I don't really need to wear glasses. I just wear it to, um, to impersonate Sork. Uh, but true. yeah, definitely go slice on Broadway.com. I am a New Yorker, and I verify that it's really good pizza. I had it two weeks ago, and it's amazing. Yes, and also baseball season is right now. You can get you can get a slice from Slice on Broadway, then walk right into PNC Park. It's that's true. what I that's what I did with Matt and Jen Carlin's when I went to my last Buckos game. This is true. It was awesome. By the way, they, I believe the Yankees are in Pittsburgh soon. Well, we'll have to see if that's a if that's a thing that can happen soon. It might be. Yeah, that might be. That might be because. Uh, oh man! Anyway, uh, Riz, anyways. Riz, yes. Let's go to the big question. Oh, we're going straight to it. Straight to it. Straight to because it. We're not even going to have I, a little pause here for Sorg, you know, just to be like, hey, there, check out this no, stuff. For fuck him. Media. Fuck him. He'll okay. figure it out. He'll figure it out in post. All right. It, he'll just cut it off right right in between. Yeah, exactly. He said, he said he'll work around this shit. He, he'll figure it out. Like, he'll cut it right here, and then all the stuff that we say is not going to be it. No, he can use this part for go gold right, right now. Here. He, he can put this out for gold. Sorg. He's he's not even gonna listen. He's not even. He's not, he's not even. Not, he's not. He's I mean, not why, even listening why now. Why are we even doing this? I should just he, be playing video games right now. He's in the wilderness. Right he's in the wilderness. He's being chased by wolves. And Tina, I'm sorry. The Mariners can go fuck themselves. He's being sorry. chased. He's being chased by lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! No, that's Chicago. Okay, that, that that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> it's a good point. He can't be in two different cities. No. <laughs> All right, so yeah. Riz. And Riz. Red Wings. And Red Wings. Yes. No, <laughs> Riz, no one's chased by the Red Wings. No, nobody is. <laughs> they didn't make the playoffs. Uh, oh. <laughs> all right, so Riz. Um, yes. Guess, guess what I saw this weekend? Wrestling. Nope. I, I, I saw Guardians of the Galaxy, Riz. Uh, that's right. I saw Guardians of the Galaxy earlier <laughs> today, too. I'm wearing a Guardians of the Galaxy Bob's Burgers cross-up t-shirt. I could have sworn I saw that there. I was like, yeah, because I like wearing funky T-shirts. But uh, Riz, you know who's in Guardians of the Galaxy? Chris Pratt. Oh, oh okay. Keep, keep in mind we're on a wrestling show. Do you know who is in Guardians of the Galaxy? Rocket Raccoon. You're getting warmer. Do you know who else is in Guardians of the Galaxy, Riz? Thanos. Actually, he's not in this one. Spoilers. Damn. Sorry. All right. I'm, I'm just uh, going to yeah, tell you. Just, just, just say Batista. It's, it's Big Dave Batista, Riz. Big Dave. Big Dave. And I have to say, he is one of the best parts in the movie. Every You would never think that when he first started. Nope. You ne- <laughs> when, when he was Deacon Batista, you never would have thought that he'd be one of the funniest motherfuckers in a movie with Chris by God Pratt. Okay? I mean, he's, he was Andy Dwyer. For, yeah. Andy Dwyer. Yeah, I mean... He's not but, shining him. Batista is so funny in this. So, Riz, yes. my big question, my big question for you right now... Big question. Besides, you know, we've had The Rock. We've had John Cena. We've had Batista. Who is the next wrestler currently in WWE who will transition to being a huge movie star that we don't even know about yet? Like, we don't even know that they have acting chops. Who do you oh, think so, it could be, Riz? So the Miz is out. Yeah, Miz is out. I'm, I'm not counting Miz or, like, people who have already been in, like, the WWE Studios films. I'm not counting those guys. Okay, or at least so, started in them. So Miz, Kane, Dolph, Rusev... Well, Kane's going to be a senator or a governor or, or mayor, whatever. He's, he's going to be a mayor. Of he's, he's, 
<laughs> that's a weird thing to say. It's gonna. It's a weird thing. He has a flame in his logo, Riz. He does. He has a flame in his logo. And every picture of a, every picture of him looks like he's doing that evil maniacal laugh that this, he always this, does. This is true. <laughs> um, all right. um, but anyways, back to the question. Yes. Uh, let's see. So, who do you think next wrestler to transition to being a huge movie star? Wow. I know it's a, as soon as because this is a little behind the curtain. Riss and I were talking for a good five minutes trying to figure out um, who would be like like what would our big question be, and um, I came up with this like I was thinking of it. I'm like, oh, this is good, and I, and I figure I'd save it for Riss so I can get his his genuine response to it. I'm gonna save Roman. Ooh, okay. I, I want to say like, Roman seems like a Vin Diesel type. Like he's not Vin Diesel. He's, I mean, he's not. He's not as good as The Rock. Okay. Obviously, you know the bloodlines there. But he is Vin Diesel type. Maybe Jason Statham, light. So that means Vin Diesel type. <laughs> yeah, I, I see. I see him just being an actual action hero. Like or a villain or something like that. I see him doing something like that, but I'm trying to think of who else could be on that list. That's the only one I can think of right now. Do you have an answer? Um, I I do. I, I wanted to put it out for the uh, for the Twitter people too, so we can get some tweets feedback from them. Tweet, tweet. Um, uh, Tina from the chat room says Finn Balor. I I don't see that. Okay. I mean, right. I, I mean, he does have a he does have zero body fat, zero percent body fat, and yeah, he does, not, looks, he does not know what a donut is. I mean, he he hasn't had a carb in two years. Well, no, not true. He had he did have a donut. Uh, he he spit that out. Oh, he spit that out. He yeah, definitely he spit that out. But I don't see him acting too much. Like he does, a, he has a good stage performance with the you know everything. Like to turn on all that, but I don't see him doing more of an acting role as much. Okay, sorry, right. Tina. Um, Wheels says Seth Rollins, and um, Brandon says Dean Ambrose. So we we got a lot of a lot of shield. Yeah, the shield. We got a lot of shield. Oh. Um, all right, I'm gonna go with someone completely different. Okay, um. I I think I truly do think this Fandango. Yeah. I I think Fandango like can within a couple years get tired of the push, get tired of doing the gimmick and leave WWE and become a pretty decent movie star. I can see it. Cuz like I I, mean, I know this wasn't the case for everyone but when they did Southpaw Professional Wrestling, he disappeared into that role. He did. He disappeared into um, what, what was it? Chet Chederson? Chet Cheddar Chet Cheddar film. Chet Cher No. Okay. Yeah. Either one. It, it was Chet Cheddar something. But he disappeared into that role for me. I didn't recognize him. Like, and he didn't change his look that much, but he really committed to that bit. Mm -hmm. And I and I, I mean I don't I'm not saying he's going to be maybe on the level of a John Cena John Cena or a Batista John Cena John Cena so just combine the two there <laughs> yes I did I did that was their tag team name it wasn't no, um it was but yeah I think Fandango could eventually be a big star and I think we saw the little inklings of it like even the fashion police skits they're doing now like yeah. that. That's quality acting stuff right there. Like it's the, a little the campy. Big windy apple. <laughs> the big windy apple. Absolutely. Like it's no cornier than the rock on Mad TV. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like it's no cornier than that. And Brandon says he'll he'll remake his own law and order. Yes. Yeah. Sign me up, Deputy Dango. <laughs> Sign me the hell up. And and no, Tina, I'm not including voiceover because voiceover work is different than having like a big on screen presence. But um yeah, so uh let's see, did we get any responses from the Twitters? 
Uh, let's see. Okay, no responses from the tourists, but I'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, keep an eye out. I'll keep an eye out as well. All right. Uh, so but, Riz. Yes. Ah, uh, what? What do you think about backlash so far? Because right now we we got we got your your Randy Orton's versus Jinder Mahal. We have a six woman tag team match. We have AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens, and we have Dolph versus Nakamura. First of all, those and, and the last tag team, two matches, the tag team match, and the tag team match. Those last two matches though, that you mentioned, Dolph Ziggler versus Shinsuke, and uh, AJ versus Kevin Owens. Mm-hmm. That's a, a that is a dream scenario to have at least one of those in there. I, I think it's going to be a really fun show. Oh, it is. I think it's going to be real, real fucking good. And it's going to be, it's definitely going to be better than a pay, 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 pay back, pay back, pay back, yeah. pay back, pay back, pay back, pay lash, pay lash, pay lashly, Bobby Lashley. Yes, Bobby, Bobby Lashley. Lashley. WWE paying Bobby Lashley, NXT champion, beats Oscar. Good. All right, here we go. But yeah, and plus we got takeover the night before. Ooh, that is the, that is the night before. Although, oh, sad news, <clears throat> Ember Moon is not going to be in that women's match. Ooh, that's sad news. I'm very disappointed by that. But it could help her character. It it's could gonna help, her. help her. It's going to help her tremendously. I mean, she's she doesn't need any help anyways, but. Eh, I don't know. I think I think she could use a little bit of help character wise, because like she had the she had the segment where the, um mm-hmm. after Takeover Orlando where she was like this should have been my time, and then she can do it again by saying she was taken out by Oscar, where Oscar was so scared of her she didn't even want her in the match. Mm-hmm. But I like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think take I think that whole weekend's gonna be really good. And it's happening on Backlash too. Mm-hmm. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect a NXT takeover to happen the night before Backlash. Like, like you, I, you I was wondering, would... why do you think they're doing that? Do you think it's just because they're in Chicago? It has to be because like, like a big, big venue. It has to be more of like a, you know what? These guys are gonna. These guys have been through so much. We've done a lot of shit to them you know like you know CM Punk so why not give them a weekend out of it like why not have TakeOver why not have a big event with Shinsuke Nakamura's WWE debut and why not just go all out with the main event being Jinder Mahal winning the world championship of the (laughs) WWE (laughs) I, I can't wait. I'm so that's, excited that's for it to be happen. The weirdest moment in WWE history. It really it have 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 the WWE ever had like a oh no they had Kali. They had Kali. They had Kali. Okay. <laughs> but Kali never won the WWE title, right? He just won the. He world never title. won the WWE title. It was only the world world heavyweight title. I I should know this. I am a great Kali. Uh, um, um, a fix aficionado. Aficionado. Yes, correct. You're uh, also a, a face swap version of Great Kali. This is true. Wait, what? <laughs> the, Wait, what? The, the picture you post that where you look like Great Kali. Oh yeah, that's true. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, no. Don't don't worry. I, I I follow your shit, Riz. I follow your shit. That was supposed uh, to be private, you know that. Well, it's all right. Um Brandon Brandon wants to know if we think this is the time for Oscar to get called up. Then what? I I don't think I don't think quite yet. No, because generally generally the way it works is after Takeover in Brooklyn. And honestly, right now, if she goes to WWE, I'd put her on Raw. I put her on Raw and go up against uh, Bliss. No, no, I don't, I don't think you do that. I don't think you do that. I think SmackDown could use. A, bit, a dose of Oscar. I think I think SmackDown will be the place for her. I just want somebody to kick her in the face. That's all. Hey, like I think no, I think I think 
No, I, I think Alexa could take that really well. Just the, <laughs> well yeah. Just, just a giant kick in the face. But but you know who else could to Riz? Natty. Natty could take a nice kick right in the mush. Mm-hmm. And you know what? She's actually, she actually did a good, she's actually doing a great job on SmackDown. A, a stellar job on SmackDown. Yeah, I, 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 I do. Li- I do like the uh, the the welcoming committee. Mm-hmm. Oh. And and the and honestly, she puts on a better sharpshooter than The Rock. Well, I mean, that's not really a difference. That's not really, but you know. But uh, so I I think I fi- figured something out about James Ellsworth. Okay. Did you ever see the movie The New Guy? Is that the one with that weird skinny kid from? Like, yep. What movie was he in before? He was in uh, Road Trip. Yeah, the Road Trip guy. Yeah. Um, okay. It's basically a movie where a weird, um, skinny kid gets in trouble, gets thrown in prison for like a day, then goes to a new school and pretends to be all thug. That's James Ellsworth. That's that's literally the storyline they're doing with James Ellsworth. Like, Pretty much. It. it it kind of works for me if I put it in that light. I was going to say more of another obscure movie from the early 2000s. Uh, he reminded he reminds me more of a uh, B-Rad G. <laughs> uh, right. from, uh, from Malibu's Most Wanted. Because uh, I think he fits that, more char- that character more of a guy who hides... Behind something, okay, all right, that's fair. For him, it was a girl. For but for you know, just something. But it was just, it, it, he even even he's doing a great job on SmackDown. Who would have thought that would happen? Um, not not me, definitely not. Like, no, I, I, mean, I thought I thought he wore out his welcome, but he's he's doing an okay job. And he might be the first guy, the first guy in a while to have a one-on-one match with with, with a female. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, Becky looks like amazing. Kick his ass. Becky looks like kick his ass. It's gonna be an amazing moment in WWE history when that happens. Uh, all right, uh, Riz. There's one other thing I want to talk about. Sure. Um, so, so Riz, have you heard of the band Kings of Leon? Like I, I, I heard the name. Okay. I cannot name any songs from them. Um. Well, uh, they they sing the song, "Your Sex Is on Fire." Okay. Now I, and now I remember because that played every hour on the hour back then, back mm-hmm. in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day, which I believe was a Thursday. Um, he got into a little uh, a little heat this weekend. And I didn't, I didn't know about this until Bo- our good friend Bobby retweeted it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he tweeted, "Hey adults, let's maybe not watch professional wrestling." You know, hmm. um, basically talking shit on anyone over a certain age who watches professional wrestling. Uh, Riz, what are your thoughts on that? Because he got a lot of hate and immediately tried to backtrack. I don't care. <laughs> I, I honestly don't care. Like I, I don't care. I don't care that he's talking about WWE. I'm the, I don't care if he hates WWE. I don't care if anything happens to him. I don't care if he sells out. He's a bassist. Nobody cares. He's a bassist for a a, a pop band. I don't care. I, I, I re, like I tried. I tried. Like man, Mike, you should know me by now. I tried to care. You've seen me tweet a lot about politics when I care about something. Mm-hmm. I tried to care about this Kings of Leon dude. Okay. I, can, I cannot. I, can, I cannot care any, anything about this guy. At okay. All. Okay. Um, at I, I, I care slightly more just because, mm-hmm. A, I, I like to watch the world burn. Um. Mm-hmm. So uh, he once he tried to backpedal. Uh, there, there was a whole 
exchange that went on where um well let's let's just say that he said some unkind things to to a female wrestling friend of ours Veda Scott now mm-hmm. we, we we've never had Veda on the program before but I like to think of her as a friend of the show <laughs> because she's Veda Scott we have, we should, I think we probably did have her on the Indie Mayhem show okay she might be on Indie Mayhem I I don't have the a friend of Mayhem yes um. But yeah, he. Which, tweeted, by the way, uh, yeah, you should check out his some of his uh, Facebook posts. It's it's pretty damn awesome that he's doing in down in Texas. Oh yeah, um, Amon, Amon's taking some bumps. He's taking yeah. some bumps. He's uh he's uh getting his shine on. Yeah. In, in the business of pro wrestling, Remember, and it's it's pretty amazing. Didn't you guys chop him at one point? Uh, I have not chopped Eamon, um, because I have personally not met Eamon in the flesh. Veronica chopped Eamon. That's who Ooh, that was. Oh, Veronica is that, chopped. That's who that was. From someone who has taken a chop from Veronica, I can safely say she chops the hardest out of anyone who has ever been on the Mayhem show. Mm-hmm. To my personal knowledge. Mm-hmm. I'm not including indie wrestlers in this. Anyways, back yes. to your point, sir. But yes, um, so anyway, uh, and Tina was saying that she's seen um, because Biggie and Xavier Woods both commented on it. Um, Biggie was like, "Get your hand out of my wallet" or something like that. <laughs> but um, and I didn't care. I was just you know giving some lighthearted fun until I saw that uh, there there was. Some indie wrestler, I forget the name offhand, but um, he tweeted at this basis guy that, uh, you know, pro wrestling is difficult to do. He His avatar is him doing a flip and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And Veda responded, Veda, Veda responded with a shrimp emoji because he's a bassist. And let's face it, he's probably a 130 soaking wet. And, and then this douche nozzle responded to Veda Scott, a very nice lady, with close your legs. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, once I saw that he was a sexist douchebag, that's when I started to get very angry and saucy about tweets and just started... I I believe there was a um, on... uh, There was a hashtag going, hashtag kings better than Leon. (laughs) And I I saw a lot going on. I saw... King Booker, King Hacksaw, Macho King, King Haku, King Harley Race. Um, there were a lot of kings happening all better than Leon. It was really uh, pretty hilarious. Nobody brought up King Billy Gunn? I believe Kelly, King Billy Gunn was okay. brought up. Uh, King right. Ass, I believe. King Ass? Okay, good. King Ass. Uh, obviously, Austin, you know, Brett... <laughs> All that stuff, uh, but yeah, I just felt we need to bring it up. And and if you if you do want to throw some shade his way, uh, the the guy's Twitter handle, which I'm gonna give out because I don't give a fuck. Um, he doesn't listen. He doesn't listen to the show anyway. So go ahead. Yeah, fuck him. Um, hold on, where the fuck is? I just had. It. <laughs> We're gonna do this right now. Whatever the fuck We're gonna, it is. We're doing it live, Riz. Oh yeah, I got it. it, it, it is oh, young yeah. at young, young follow, follow Ill. Ill. Yeah, young follow ill. Uh, yeah, please feel free to give him as much shit as humanly possible because he's a bassist and can only play a four string guitar. Exactly. And on, honestly, I like I said, I don't really care right now about him. I don't care crazy. either, but once he once he once he starts being like a dick to to women in general, then that's when you get my ire. I don't, I don't oh, he, care. He's a, he's a dick, but it, there's a lot of dicks in this world that I'm like, uh, I don't care anymore. <laughs> like, like this is one of those things like, oh, maybe I should, but he's also a dick. This is true. All right. Uh, he, he's the Anderson Cooper eye roll to the nation right now. Hey, hey, Riz. You know, yes. You know who isn't a dick? Me. No. Well, I mean, the Patreon supporters. No, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, Riz. You know who isn't a dick? Sword. The good people at IndieWrestling.us. 
the good people at IndieWrestling.us. You can catch a lot of your favorite indie performers there, including, I'm assuming, Veda Scott. You can watch all of her matches and really have fun with it. You can buy IWC DVDs, Hardaway DVDs, digital downloads, all that sorts of fun, crazy stuff. And and you know what? If you want to support us, too, go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. Did you know we... Yeah, did you know we have shirts? You can you can rep the mayhem show. I, I I rep the mayhem show all the time. It's it's really a lot of fun. We we have some good shirts. They're very it's, nice and comfy. We even had some good times. Good times. Yes, we actually com t shirts. We actually have a shirt that says "Good Times." Yes, time show, which in which the is, uh, Fast Times of Ridgemont High t shirt style. Yeah, it, it's a pretty fantastic, amazing, shirt. done by uh, Alex Cars, who's amazing at his job. Yes, thank you, uh, Alex Cars, very much. All right. Uh, so, Riz. Man, Mike. Uh, is, there, is there anything else that we have not covered in the world of professional wrestling that we, that we need to before we end this dog and pony show? I'm trying to think, like, because it was a light week. It was a very light week. It was a, it was I mean, a real light week in wrestling. Did anything happen on impact? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> <laughs> not not as such. But Riz, guess what? Hmm. We are less than a month away until the return of Lucha Underground. So it is we, coming back? Yeah. Oh yeah, they still have to finish season three. Oh, that's right. They do finish. Yeah, they do we're finish on three. we're on the break time. That's true. That's true. We're on the break time. And it, and to get ready for that, Lucha uh, Lucha Underground did release a graphic. Did you see this, Riz? I did not. Oh, okay. Hold on. I'm gonna grab the link for you while I talk about Lucha a little bit. Uh, they released a graphic talking about Dario Cueto's um, uh, <laughs> relationships. Oh, in, yeah. Like, um, not like his business relationships. Okay. It's pretty fascinating. I guess see if I can find it here. Um, like, see. like sexual relations? No, not not like, sexual, not sexual. Like, like the the, like the business powers. partners, business yeah. partners, business partners. Like the power struggle in Lucha Underground, basically. Um, it's really kind of interesting. Uh, especially, it kind of serves as a primer to um to Lucha Underground if you are uninitiated. So uh, what I'm going to do is, as soon as I bring this link up, I will send it to you in the chat room so you can uh, check out what I'm talking about. But I'm okay. I can't wait for the show to come back. I need to go back and watch like the last two episodes of it before it comes on. You have to, to refresh yourself, like, like a little do, bit, like we do for every time, like uh, The Walking Dead comes on. We have to figure out what what happened like last year. Well, that might be what you do, but me not being a Walking Dead fan, I don't do that. That's that's a good point. But if if like there's a new Avengers movie, I try and watch the the ones before that mm-hmm. to uh to to refresh myself. Okay, here we go. Uh, Lucha Underground infographic, and I'll put it up in the uh, <laughs> YouTube chat room too for for the uh, for the folks who follow Lucha with us. Um. It's it's really really amazing. I I'm... there we go. It's in the uh, YouTube file. It's in the YouTube link. And Riz, I am sending it to you in the chat currently. There you go. Oh, nice. That was quick. Yeah, I'm pretty fast when it comes to when I, when I need to be. Uh, ladies, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. That, no, you, no, no. Like, no, it's it's fine. Not, it's fine. It's fine. not how it works. So I, I think it's kind of cool that Councilman Delgado is uh, at the top of the food chain huh. on this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I love the. There's a color guide for the Lucha Underground for they they call it Dario Cueto's Web of Corruption. <laughs> so he, here's the color the color guide for this whole um, for this whole. Uh, graphic there's employer employee mysterious alliance which is amazing um allies and partners 
mentor and student. And then there's rivals, brothers, alter ego, and killed. Because, yes, people die in Lucha Underground. <laughs> We still haven't seen that Alberto fellow. Uh, no, no, we have actually. Oh, he's, he's back. He's missing. Oh, he's missing. Oh, yeah, he's missing. yeah, yeah. A few of the people um, on um, uh, what's Captain Vasquez's wall are mm -hmm. deemed missing in the world of Lucha Underground, and Alberto's one of them. Uh... <laughs> uh... Oh, he's a. Joey Ryan. That's the weirdest name. Like it, it, out of everybody on here, I'm like, oh, that's a weird name. That's a weird name. That's a weird name. Joey Ryan. I know that guy. <laughs> Riz, we really need to get you to catch up on Lucha Underground. I need to watch it on Netflix. I haven't had time to catch up on it on there. You really need to get back into it because I, the, this is this is a a huge breakdown of a lot of stuff that's happened. Mm -hmm. And I know Sorg is in the midst of catching up. I think his goal was to uh, get completely caught up by the time season three returns. But uh, I, I can't stress how excited I am about Lucha coming back, Chris. <laughs> I can feel it. Yeah, even even though it's gonna it. add, it's gonna add a fourth show to the midweek four. I don't care at this point because I just want to meet some more Lucha, <laughs> like so much. Uh, all right, so uh, Riz, unless you have anything else, I think that's pretty much it for this week. I think we can. Well, well, well. I mean, that, I mean, we, we have, have to. to do our, we have to do the thing. Of course, we have to do the thing. Where Matt and Mike, I'm yeah. gonna ask you first. What did you learn in wrestling this week? Oh, what did I learn in wrestling this week? Oh man. That is, oh, that's tough. That's tough because I, I, hmm, I learned, um, I learned two things, Riz. Mm -hmm. One, uh, Fandango looks amazing in a Sherlock Holmes hat. Fandango looks amazing in anything. We continue. Yeah, no, I, but especially in a Sherlock Holmes hat. Not many people can pull that off. Um, the second thing I learned is that hearing Batista say he has sensitive nipples is very funny. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's, that's what I learned this week. That is what I learned. Uh, Riz, how about you? What did you learn this week? Let's see, I learned that we, th this week was weird because uh, we in Pittsburgh had a hockey game that sucked, and I couldn't turn it off because Raw was in England and and it was already pre-taped and it was ruined for me. Okay, so, uh, well, so did you read the spoilers or were you just spoiled in general? Oh no, I was just like anytime, anytime there's a pre-taping, I just feel like you know what, I don't have enough time to care if they don't. Like, uh, I, I don't, I didn't even watch it as much as I thought I was going to watch it. Okay. That's fair. Like the, it, just the fact that it was pre-taped made me just go, oh, I don't really care. Like, okay. I don't know why, I don't know why it's that life factor that makes it better, but I just feel. It's probably like knowing you can easily find out what happened because Raw is so damn long. Exactly. Cause like, I didn't do that with SmackDown tonight. I just watched SmackDown. Because SmackDown think, was good. Well, that too. <laughs> that too. But um, All right, so uh, Brandon from the chat learned that someone or a group of people have too much time on their hands to put out nude photos of wrestlers. Um, yes. Hi. There's the two of us here. Unfortunately, that is uh, very, very true and very sad. Uh, that's why we didn't choose to talk about that tonight. Just because, you know... None of our business. I don't really care. Like, uh, the same thing with the King yeah. of Leon. I don't really care. Yeah, it's none of our business. Like, it, it sucks what happened, but you know, the more we talk about, I'm not even gonna mention who it was. No. The, the more we talk about, it, the more people are just going to glom onto it. Uh, yeah. And I mean, uh, I mean, even even wrestlers that have put it out there, 
on their own, mm-hmm. Sonny, uh, <laughs> ruined it for everybody. Well, I mean, everybody, not everyone. There, there are people who there are people who are still fans of that. There are people who are still fans of it, and mm-hmm. uh, T- Tina learned, even though she's she said it in both places, she learned that Corey Graves is the savior of color of color commentary. This is true. Yes, all these are true things. All right, uh, so Riz, yes. where can the, where can the good people of the internet find you? Well, Mad Mike, if you go on to Twitch right now, or not right now, maybe tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. At this no, not this time. Maybe a little earlier than this time. Riz, I will Riz, be, Riz. Yes, yes. People, people aren't all listening live. Maybe okay. you should. Maybe you should tell them a time. No. No. Well, maybe go to Twitch at, I'm going to say around 8, maybe 9 o'clock. And, uh, Eastern, Eastern. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern on, on, on May 10th. On May 10th. Or you or, know what? Just you know go what? to Anyways. Riz's Twitch page yes. and just keep so, refreshing. Just go to Riz Plays Games right now. <laughs> Refresh every just 10 minutes. Until refreshing until I say so. Uh, but I might be playing a uh, cool little indie game that I keep on seeing on, on Facebook a lot, a lot of times uh, while on there, uh, called Little Nightmares, Nightmares, uh, which is going to be freaking me out for the next few days. Uh, but yes, go to Riz Plays Games on Twitch. That's where I am. All right, and uh, you can find me at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter machine. You can also find me uh, Thursday. Don't know if Sorg's gonna be available, but we'll be doing the midweek war again. Uh, excuse me, we talk NXT two hundred five live and sadly Impact Wrestling. Also, uh, you can go to at Mayhem Show. You can have the hashtag MM for when I live tweet shows, uh, especially Impact Wrestling, because usually it helps me get through the show. Um, also, again, feel free to hit us up at that email address, goodtimes at wrestlingmamshow.com. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Yanni. Riz. Wow. Thank you, Yanni. Up on me. Thank you for joining the show, Yanni, friend of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also, uh, go to our Facebook group, hit us up on all the links I mentioned before because I'm not going to bring them up again. But, uh, yeah, so um, we will back. We will be back next week with a larger crew and probably – from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, I'd like to thank our producer, Missy, for having those notes that were available for me to read from a past show so I could get most of our stuff in. Thank you, Missy. We love you, Missy. See, I, see uh, if I say it in the sword glasses, he might actually get brownie points for that. But I'm not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for the Riz, for Sorgatron, the remote deserts of Michigan, uh, I'm Mad Mike and Mayhem. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.